one of the fiercest carnivores to have ever existed, and the coward running away, the Iguanodon. When facing a deadly adversary, running away is a normal reaction, but what if I chose to fight instead of flight? And let's find out what we should do to win that fight. Hello there, my name is Adam Lokte, and today I'm going to show you how to fight properly as an Iguanodon. First, the disclaimers. Any and all major updates in the future may change how you play the Iguanodon, be it fight or just a regular play. Therefore, what I'm about to say may just be temporarily. Second of all, my time with the Iguanodon are limited, so one of your more experienced Iguanodon players might not agree with everything I say. And if you do find something disagreeable, just comment it down below in a calm and mature way. In this video, we will be going over the arsenal of Iguanodon, what choice of subspecies you should grow, what terrain you should aim to fight in, and the fights you can find yourself in. Be it 1 vs Apex, yourself vs a pseudo Apex or mid tiers, you vs low tiers, or you vs a pack, and at the end I'll summarize. We don't have any sensibility yet, so we'll have to wait for that. The front limb have two slots, but we have only one ability, a claw attack that causes bleed. We have two options for hide, we have tough scouts that increases armor by 15%, and light whale scales that increases speed by 10% but decreases turning speed by 25%. Personally, I go with Tough Scout because the Iguanodon already has amazing speed. Decreasing your turning speed also won't do you any good against faster opponents. Leg abilities, we have Webbed Feet that increases swimming speed and decreases stamina drain in water, and Traction that increases turning speed by 20% but decreases stamina recovery by 30%. Personally, I use Webbed Feet. The stamina drain on Iguanodon are exponentially low, so you most definitely will be able to outstam most. Unfortunately, your stamina recovery are kinda meh, so increasing the stamina recovery time even further will not do you any favor in a prolonged fight. It is also good to have web feet in case if you want to have a somewhat ticket out of a fight. The swimming speed on Iguanodon are actually pretty good. So if you don't want to fight, then swim. Of course, it's not a guaranteed safety ticket out of a fight. And if you're going to do the water route, then you might run into other enemies. This is also where tough scouts can also help you survive such an encounter. This strategy aren't without risk, so this should be absolutely last option. For back limbs, we have two options. We have a kick attack that kicks backward and causes medium damage, and a charge ability that charges forward causing damage to anything you hit. This charge ability are kind of a waste since the Iguandon are pretty fast already, and the back limb does incredible damage. It can cost 90 damage, though at the cost of some stamina. This ability is also why I recommend Web Feet over the other ability that increases stamina recovery time. This ability can be the decider between life and death in a battle, so having stamina to use it is important. We have Swimming Tail and Normal Tail. I use Normal Tail because when you go low of stamina, then that tail attack will be the only thing keeping enemies off your butt. Also, it is the attack with best reach. For subspecies you should grow, I would actually go with Balanced. The fighting style of Iguanodon is a lot of dodging and weaving, and the Balanced are perfect for that. Tough enough to take some hits and fast enough to dodge some of the major attacks. The defense subspecies can tank a few big hits, but that doesn't mean you can just eat it. You're also slower, so that means you're at bigger risk at getting hit by charge up abilities, and even if you're tough, you should avoid them at all costs. Just because you're fast doesn't mean you're unavoidable. Even if you have decent attack without proper defense, you're kind of a glass cannon. Also, the lack of defense will come back and bite you if you're facing opponents faster than you. That's why I recommend balanced. Strong enough to take a few hits and also fast enough to dodge the most critical of hits. 
Iguanodon are kind of an all-rounder when it comes to what terrain you should fight in. Its range of attack can reach pretty much everywhere, as long as you move according to your enemy, then you should be good no matter what terrain. Though I will say, if you are facing multiple adversaries, I would choose an area with a lot of hindrances, as that can temper with their coordination and grant you an opening to either fight back or run away. An Iguanodon can absolutely fight an Apex to a standstill. Even though he has higher damage output, you are faster. Not to mention you have way better stamina and that's how you can win the fight. At the beginning of a fight you should first aim to get your enemy to waste as much stamina as possible. With the exception of Spinosaurus, the charge ability for most creatures drains a lot of stamina. When your opponents are unable to do their charge up abilities, that's when it's safer for you to get closer. And you can start focusing getting that bleed in and slowly chipping away the opponent's health. You can of course use a combo of tail attack and the back kick, but I wouldn't use back kick if there's a risk of me getting seriously injured in the process, considering it requires you to stand still and that's when you're open for attacks. Once again, it is capable of fighting apexes to a standstill, if not even kill them. Also remember, if you insist on not fighting, then you are capable of running away. Even if you can't initially outspeed them, you can definitely outstand them. Since Iguanodon are capable of going toe to toe with apexes, Going up against pseudo apexes are absolutely possible. However, unlike in fights with apexes where you are the fastest, a fight with pseudo apexes the roles are reversed. That's why you should take a defensive position and let them run around you. Of course you don't have to do exactly what I'm about to do, and that is climbing on a place where they can only attack me from one direction because you are more than capable of face stacking them. You are tankier than them, so in a head-to-head -head clash, they will most likely lose. There are many who underestimate the Iguanodon due to how it looks and it kinda looks like a gentle herbivore. So when they do attack you, you kinda run in without too much thoughts behind their attacks. And that's why you just need to take a defensive stand, let them run around you and waste stamina, and also let them run into your attacks. It is Iguanodon's toughness that give it its edge. In fact, it is so tough that an adolescent Iguanodon can take on subadult of low tiers. Full-blown adults might be a bit too much, but it can definitely give it a run for its money. This is also a good example on what I said earlier about how you should deal with faster opponents. Let them run circles around you and with stamina. They will most likely try and tail ride you. And that's when you just need to do that, but hit. Also remember to hit that thumbs up button, both on this video and in game. Once you see they are low on stamina, that's when you can begin candor attacking. A combination of your thumb attack and back kick attack are deadly. Thumb to give the bleed effect, and back kick to give the damage. This will only be easier for you if you were a full-blown adult. Of course, if you're facing multiple adversaries, then here's what you should do. Remember what I said about areas with hindrances? That will definitely come in play here. You should also single out which one you should target. In this case, I chose the Pycno with the greenish tail. Of course, the other will be on your ass, so you gotta get them away, too. And here's how hindrances can come into play. With how close I cut it, I can't say that you should expect to win a fight in a 3v1. Even I admit that a bit of luck does play. 
Pete informed that they also hit each other, or ran into hindrances stopping them in their track and making them easier for me to hit. So to summarize, against Apexes, at the beginning try to make them waste as much stamina as possible, while also do hit and run during their cooldown. When they are low on stamina, that is when you can start counterattacking more aggressively. Keep doing hit and run until they either die or give up. Against the pseudo Apex, if you don't want him to attack you from multiple directions, then put yourself in a position where he can only attack you from one direction. Also, force him into a head-to-head -head battle, where you will most definitely have the advantage. When he gets low or he tries to rest, then that's when you give chase. Then it's up to you if you want to chase him and kill him, or just let him go. Against low tier, so just creatures faster than you, you let them run around you and waste stamina while also letting them run straight into your attacks while also saving your own stamina. And when they are low on stamina, that's when you give chase and just hunt them down. And against multiple opponents, you single one out and mark him for death, then you focus on mostly him, and then you mostly just hope that you can kill him faster than they can kill you. If I sounded tired during this entire video, it is because I am editing this at 4am and still going. So if you like what I do, please show your support so I know that my work and struggling ain't for nothing. I'ma go sleep.